Hello, you can hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Anaya Gaya Three, Rihanna, and Imandi. Okay. All right, we can start. Uh, okay. Today, we start with this stanza. Uh, you can see number 17. I read as before, this time word by word, and you repeat after me. Second time I recite two words by two words, then you recite it after me. Third time I recite line by line and recite after me. And then you can see the meaning. Let us begin. First, word by word. Ida. Ida. Nandati. Ah, uh, tapadi, the tapadi. Tapadi. Pet, petcha. Petcha. Tapadi. 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 Papa kari. Papa kari. Ubayatta. Ubayatta. Tapadi. Tapati Papang me Papang me Katanti Katanti Tapati Tapati Bio Bio Tapati Tapati Dugating Dugating Gato. Gato. Okay. Two words by two words. Ida tapati. Ida tapati. Pecha tapati. Pecha tapati. Papakari. Papakari. Ubayatta tapati. Ubayatta. Tatapati Papang me Papang me Katanti tapati Katanti tapati Bio tapati Bio tapati Dugating gato Dugating gato Line by line Idha tapati pecha tapati. Idha tapati pecha tapati. Papakari ubhayatta tapati. Papakari ubhayatta tapati. Papang me katanti tapati. Bio tapati dugating gato. Bio tapati dugating gato. Gato. Once again, line by line. Idha tapati pecha tapati. Idha tapati pecha tapati. 
पापकारी उभयथ तपति पापंग में कथंति तपति बट ही अंडरस्टूड Tapati suffers pech after death. Tapati he suffers. Papakari the wicked one. Ubayat both places. Tapati suffers. Papang. evil or wicked deed may by me or by, by me katang done ti tapati thinking that i have done evil deed he suffers be o tapati be o means more tapati suffers duggating gato when he goes to woeful state of existence suffers more thinking i have done wicked wickedness duggating gato gone to woeful state of existence be o tapati he, he suffers more uh I think something is meant to be. Duggati, duggati means woeful state of existence. Gato. Let me put that for you to understand better. So we <clears throat> okay. He suffers more. He suffers more. Okay. He suffers more after going to woeful state of existence, thinking, "I have done wicked deeds. I have done wickedness, wicked deeds." We put this. Line. Ah, I have to go into woeful state of existence. Be your tapati. He suffers more, thinking I have done wicked deeds. I have to go into woeful state of existence. That is the complete. Now, behind this. Uh, stanza there is a story there were a 
प्रिंस प्रिंसेस प्रिंसेस सिक्स ऑफ देम भद्रिय महानाम नंदिय किंबिल अनुरुद्ध आनंद सिक्स एंड अनुरुद्ध ब्रदर महानाम टोल अनुरुद्ध we all our sakyan families have sent at least sent one of them from each family to become a monk but in our family nobody has become a monk that is not good therefore brother you told anuruddha go and become a monk then anuruddha asked uh, what is uh, wh- what should we do to become a monk he said you have to shave your head beard wear colored clothes and sleep on a very rug rough bed or on the floor take arms bowl and go round and collect your food to eat anuruddha has been a spoiled child so spoiled that uh, he has never been taught the meaning of no so much that when he and other sakyan children were playing when the loser must give something others to eat so every time they played anuruddha lost anuruddha had a helping boy he sent him home asking anuruddha's mother to send him cake so anuruddha's mother had made the whole lot of cake and kept in the house so when this boy went anuruddha's mother sent cake to anuruddha second time anuruddha lost second time also he sent this boy to bring cake third time he lost third time also he sent this boy home to bring cake fourth time he lost fourth time when this went boy went home to bring cake anuruddha's mother found no cake now anuruddha's mother told this boy to go and tell anuruddha that there is no cake anuruddha had never known what no means so anuruddha asked this boy to go home and bring no cake he thought no cake is another kind of cake so he went and <laughs> told anuruddha's mother anuruddha asked to bring ho- no cake anuruddha's mother was so upset so sad and she had never taught him the meaning of no now what to do she got uh, an empty bowl covered with another empty bowl and gave to this boy to go and give to anuruddha the story goes that 
all the deities in that region were very shocked that Anuruddha was going to learn the meaning of no. Anuruddha in his previous life had done a lot of meritorious deeds and he himself has made an earnest wish that in future when he wherever he would be born he would never hear the word no. Whatever he wanted, he would get it. Now this is the situation. Now these deities knew this. Therefore, what they did was they brought a divine cake and put into that empty bowl and cover it with the other bowl. And this boy brought this divine cake to the playground and opened it. It was so aromatic, so sweet smelling that entire area was covered with this aroma. And then Anuruddha went home after playing and he said to his mother, Mother, you don't love me because all these days you did not send me no cake. Only today you send me all no cake. And from now on, I don't want to any other cake but no cake. So no cake is the name for him. And the mother also did the same thing. Covered empty ball with another ball and sent it. On the way, these divine beings put cake into that ball. So this went on for some times. Then Mahanam Anuruddha's brother told Mahanama, one of us, either you or me, must become a monk. Anuruddha asked Mahanama, how, what does it mean? So he explained what it means. Then Anuruddha said, now he's a spoiled boy. And therefore when uh, Mahanama told him, you become a monk and this is what you have to do after becoming a monk. Anuruddha said, uh, it is difficult, I cannot see, I am uh, such and such a person, I even don't know the meaning of no. Then Mahanama said, okay, in that case you become a householder and do farming. Then he asked, uh, what is farming? Because uh, Anuruddha, Nandi and Kimbala, these three people, did not know what farming is. And Nandi said, the food comes from the storage, rice uh, granary because he one day he saw his mother taking grains from the storeroom. And Nandi, uh, the, the Bhagu said, rice come from the pot, cooking pot, because he saw his mother serving him from the pot, cooking pot. Anuruddha said, no, 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 no. Rice comes from the plate. They even did not know where the rice comes from. So when Mahanama asked Anuruddha to become a monk, become a, a farmer, Anuruddha asked Mahanama, 
what does it mean? How can you become a farmer? What does a farmer should do? Then he told him, farmer has to find the land, cut down the trees, remove frogs and thorns and uh, so forth, clear the ground, make it smooth, plough it, water it. When it is muddy, you get the seed, plant the seed, and then turn water. And when there are insects, you have to get rid of insects and so forth and so on. whole process of farming, he told Anuruddha, and said, then you have to prepare for the next season. And next season also like that. Anuruddha said, brother, this is going to be an endless work. There is no liberation, like sansara, always doing this, 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 this. Therefore, I become monk. That is somewhat relatively easier. So he went to his mother and asked mother's permission to become a monk. Mother said, no, I cannot permit you to become a monk. You are, the, you are like a person who has one eye. I, I love you so much, I cannot let you go. Anyway, Anuruddha begged her again and again and again. Finally, Anuruddha's mother told him, if Bhadya agrees to become monk, then you go. So he went to Bhadya and Bhadya agreed. Then Anuruddha, Bhadya, Nandya, Bhagu, Kimbila, and Ananda. These six joined together and with a lot of uh, uh, ceremonial things, uh, they all, after about one week of ceremony, uh, they went to a monastery and became monks. Among them was uh, among them was uh, Upali. When they were going to become monk, when they reached the boundary of their uh, territory, their kingdom, uh, they have to uh, they have to leave, go there to the monastery in a simple cloth, not this uh, princely attire. So they removed all of them and made bundles and gave to Upali. Upali was their bab, their, their adobe, who did all their laundry work. So Upali took these bundles of jewelry and all gold, silver and so forth and um, he cried and cried for leaving these uh, six uh, princes uh, and going home. But after some distance he went and uh, opened the bundles, took all the jewelries and all ornaments, hung on trees and said, whoever likes to have them, let them have. I don't own them. He ran with them. And then finally he also joined. Now uh, eight of them. Uh, seven of them and all of them went and these uh, princes six of them told a monk in the monastery that uh, to ordain Upali first because when Upali they considered to be of low caste because he was Dobe, uh, laundryman. Laundryman's job considered to be very low job. Low in uh, in their system, society. And people who do that is considered to be of low caste. So Anuruddha said to the monk, please ordain him first so that we can pay respect to him and become humble. Now we are very proud of our princely life. We want to become humble. So they all 
the monk agreed and ordained uh, Upali first and then all the other six ordained. Now, all of them except Devadatta attain higher stages of significance, distinctions, attaining stream entry, once written, uh, never written, uh, around it, and so forth within a very short period of time. But Devadatta did not attain any of those superhuman uh, holy uh, states, but he attained supernatural powers by practicing jhana. Practicing jhana. After attaining uh, super, gaining supernatural powers, uh, he lived with them. When they went to the monastery, in the monastery, people come with all kinds of gifts and ask for ask where the Buddha was, where Sariputta was, where Moggallana was, where Anurdha, where Kimbila, where Bhagu, where uh, Nandiya, where Ananda. But nobody was asking about Devadatta. Devadatta got very upset. And he thought, I also must get some gift, support uh, from people. So now Ana Devadatta became a very greedy person. And then he created, because he had supernatural power, he created himself or turned or transformed himself as a young boy and created snakes. He put one snake around his neck, another on his each arm, and another on his belly, another on the head, and then appeared in front of Ajata Sattu, Bimbisara's son. Bimbisara's son. He thought Bimbisara's son could help him to gain a lot of wealth. He appeared and fell on his lap and Ajay Sattu got very upset when he, opened it, when he saw this person sitting on his lap with snakes. He got scared and he jumped up and asked, who are you? Then he made this snake disappear from him and told him, and got back to his Devadatta's form and told Ajata Sattu. Now, uh, Ajata Sattu also was a prince, Kim Bimbisara's son. He said, Prince, in the past, people live quite long. Nowadays, their lifespan is very short. You may die without becoming a king. And therefore, you kill your father and become a king. I kill the Buddha and become Buddha. That instant, Devadatta lost all his supernatural powers. But he gained various gains material gains. So, then it, he, Devad, Ajahn Sattu was successful in killing his father, King Bimbisara. That's a long story. And now Devadatta is trying to kill the Buddha. So, first, he sent people to kill the Buddha several times. Each of them listened to Dhamma and attained stream entry and never returned. So Ajahn Sattu found it, that plot didn't work. 
Then he thought of uh, uh, killing by sending uh, an elephant called Nalagiri. He made Nalagiri drunk, gave alcohol, made him drunk, and sent on the way when where Buddha was walking. But Buddha was so compassionate, so full of love, so powerful that Analagiri could not kill the Buddha. He subdued and paid respect to the Buddha and did not kill. Then Ajahnsatu thought uh, uh, killing the Buddha by himself. He went to Rajagaha and got a huge rock when the Buddha was walking at the foot of the Gijaguta mountain in Rajaga, in, in, then he went, climbed the Gijaguta mountain from one side and got a huge rock and hurled it against the Buddha. But it uh, stuck on, stuck another, uh, struck another uh, rock and I stopped there, but one small splinter went and wounded the Buddha's foot. So now, Buddha, he could not kill the Buddha. Then one day, Ajahnsatu thought, no, I must confront him directly and uh, demand certain things from the Buddha. One day when the Buddha was teaching Dhamma, he went there and said to the Buddha, Venerable Sir, the monks must always live in forest. They must wear pansukula robe, that means a robe made up of, made of uh, the ragged clothes collected from the channel ground. Monks, monks uh, must be vegetarians all their life. They live only on Pindapata, no invited, uh, go to invited houses uh, on invitation and eat food. And um, monks uh, must uh, uh, live in uh, under 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 trees, under trees. And Buddha said, Devadatta, don't ask this kind of thing for monks to do. Whoever likes to do all the, any of them or all of them, let them do. Let the monks select or decide to do what they want. These are not necessary for the attainment of Supreme Enlightenment. And then Devadatta said to monks, now, Venerables, who is more virtuous, the Buddha or I? I demanded the Buddha that the monks must live in caves, under trees, and eat vegetarian food, and, uh, and wear the ragged clothes, and so forth and Buddha refused them, I observe this principle. Then he said, those who uh, agree with me, let them come with me. So on the following full moon day, on the opposite of the day, uh, he took uh, 500 monks from the congregation of the monks, uh, unenlightened, newly ordained, uneducated, not very intelligent, monks all agreed to go with Devadatta. And he started performing Uposvata by himself. So that is how he splitted the Sangha. That's called Sangha Bheda. He split the Sangha. Anyway, when he went there, 
and uh, perform Uposata ceremony. Then Buddha sent Venerable Sariputta to bring those monks who have been misled by Devadatta, bring them back. Venerable Sariputta went there. When Devadatta was imitating the Buddha, because Buddha sometimes when he was uh, tired, he would take rest in the uh, preaching hall and ask Venerable Sariputta to continue the Dhamma sermon. Similarly, Devadatta pretended to be Buddha. What he did was he was, he, he said to his uh, disciple, Ko Kalika, uh, I will uh, take some rest. As uh, the Sariputta went to bring those 500 monks back to the Buddha. Then Devadatta, uh, pretending to be Buddha, uh, asked Kokalika to tell Sariputta to continue the sermon while Devadatta was taking rest. When Devadatta was taking rest, he fell asleep. Venerable Sariputta gave a beautiful sermon and asked all the monks to return to the Buddha. They went back with all these 500 monks. First he went alone with, with uh, Moggallana, and when he returned to the Buddha, he brought 500 monks. When he returned to the Buddha, these 500 monks, Kokalika, his chief disciple of Devadatta, shook uh, Devadatta from his, shook him up, and uh, with his knee, he gave a kick to Devadatta's chest, and Devadatta got so sick, he began to throw up blood. After some time, Devadatta became very sick, very sick. For nine months, he was sick. And then finally, he said to his disciples, now, even though I offended the Buddha, Buddha never offended me. Therefore, I must go and apologize to Buddha. And while Buddha was teaching in Jetavana Monastery, Devadatta's close disciples put, in, put Devadatta in a, a sort of a, in a bed and carried him towards Jetavana Monastery for Devadatta to see the Buddha. Now, at that moment, Devadatta regretted and took refuge in the Buddha. Now, people ask, uh, having known Devadatta's character, why did the Buddha ordain him? Why did he ordain him? Buddha was very compassionate. He was far-sighted. Buddha's reply was that Devadatta, Buddha knew that Devadatta would take refuge in the Buddha, and taking refuge in the Buddha is very great meritorious deed. As a result of that, in future, he would become Pachyaka Buddha called Ari, uh, uh, Atisara. Atisara. He would become Pachyaka Buddha by the name of Atisara. And out of compassion for him, therefore Buddha ordained him. Anyway, now Devadatta was being brought to see the Buddha in a bed, people carrying him physically. And as Devadatta was approaching, the monk got the news and told the Buddha, Venerable Sir, Devadatta is now regretting he is coming to see you to 
beg your pardon to re- to confess and ask you to forgive him buddha said devadatta in this life cannot see me then as he was approaching the approaching the jetavan monastery uh, now they said when the person now is uh, three miles cross buddha said no he cannot see me two miles cross one mile cross half a mile cross now is at the jetavan Uh, monastery uh, there was a pond little pond the monk said that devadatta is now at the jetavana pond at that moment devadatta the people who brought devadatta put him down and wanted to refresh themselves take bath drink some water and rest and then bring him to the monastery as soon as they put him down devadatta managed to stand up as he stood up there slowly and gradually he was swallowed swollen swallowed by the earth and he slowly split the earth and he was uh, dragged into avichi hell avichi hell avichi hell is the worst kind of hell among all the hells that is the very brief summary of devadatta's life so he regretted here he suffers after that he suffered the wicked one suffer in both places he suffered more thinking i have done wicked wickedness after going to woeful state of existence now this is the story behind this now let us repeat let me repeat the stanza once again so that uh, you try to remember the stanza very important stanza probably most of you don't know all these uh, uh, events of devadatta i simply gave you very brief summary uh, but don't have much time to give them in detail now let us decide this idha tapati pecha tapati idha tapita tapati pecha tapati papakari ubayat tapati papang me katanti tapati papang me Bio tapati dugati ngato. Bio tapati dugati ngato. Okay. You try to read it with me. Okay. Let us begin. Idha tap. Tapati pecha tapati. Idha tapati pecha tapati. Papakari ubayat tapati. Papakari ubayat tapati. Papang me katan ti tapati. Papa Mika Tanti Tapati Bio Tapati Dugati Ngato Bio Tapati Dugati Ngato 
You see, in every line there is a tapati. In the first line there are two tapasis. Second line, one tapati. Third line, one tapati. Fourth line, one tapati. So, tapati, 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 tapati. Tapati means suffers. Suffers. Uh, either means here, in this life. Pecha means after death. Next life. Papakari. Papa means wicked. Kari is uh, one who does it. So Papakari means wicked, uh, one who commits Papa, wickedness. Ubaya. Ubayatta means both worlds, both places. Then papang, uh, papang is wrong thing, wicked thing. Me by me, katang done. And the and bio means a great or more, bo bio more. Dugati is again Sugati. Sugati is heaven. Dugati is hell. We call it in a little palatable word woeful state. Woeful. Painful state. State where all is suffering. Nothing but suffering. So this is what happens when somebody is as wicked as Devadatta. You can see in Devadatta's life a uh, lot of uh, wicked things. Now, uh, children, we have to do some meditation. I will uh, close this and open the section on meditation so that you can uh, do some meditation with me. Let me see where is that. Okay. And now, okay. I don't know whether you can see this. No. No one. Can you see this? Sharing marriage? What do you call this course on loving friendliness? Yes. Yes, Bante. Okay, now let us read this and then spend few minutes meditating. Okay? I hope by now most of you know this by heart. If not, look at this and read with me. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother who risks her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, or sitting, 
lying down now whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here. Not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and <coughs> end out with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay. Now, we must pay total undivided attention to our breath as we breathe in and out. We notice our breath. When we notice our breath, We know this pure, simple breath and we pay attention, exclusive attention to breath without using any words. We block off all greed, hatred, sleepiness, drowsiness, restless and worry and doubt. We don't let them invade our mind, keep the mind as pure as clear as possible. And see the pure, clean breath, air moving in and out. We notice then the breath touches in some places, either at the tip of the nose, it touches nostrils or upper lips. That variation depends on the formation of noses. So each person must breathe in and out to notice the place where the breath touches, and that is where we focus our mind on. And we notice sometimes breath is a couple of seconds or three, four, five seconds longer, sometimes shorter. Noticing this long inhaling, as long inhaling, long exhaling, as long exhaling. Short inhaling as short inhaling, short exhaling as short exhaling, without using words or concepts, but simply become aware of the length of breath. If I were to give more instructions, we may not have much time to practice. Therefore, let me stop talking and try to practice at least this as, as this much for a few minutes until I ring the bell. Okay?
touching it with
by means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, friends. This is the end of this, this uh, today's session. I hope you all enjoyed this session and you may continue your meditation as long as you like. Now I want to end this session and hope to see you next week. Okay? Thank, Thank you, Bonte. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. How to end the session now? Make the stop time. sharing. Ah. <laughs> Girl, okay, bye, yeah? Bye. 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 All right. Bye. Girl,